Hello everyone. As a part of the continuation of the ECG lecture series, in this session I will be discussing the very important wave of the ECG that is the QRS complex. So, as we have discussed in our the basics that QRS complex it represents the ventricular depolarization and it corresponds to phase 0 of the cardiac action potential. Now what is that we need to learn in the QRS complex that is so this is the normal QRS complex. In the QRS complex you need to understand what is the normal duration of the QRS complex. So you need to know what all conditions the duration of the QRS complex changes. So the normal QRS complex it is around 70 to 100 milliseconds. That is the normal QRS complex. So in certain conditions you will have wide QRS complex and in certain clinical scenarios you have narrow QRS complexes. So what are those conditions where you will have abnormalities that is what I will be discussing that is number one related to your QRS complex. And number two what I will be discussing is about the amplitude. So in QRS complexes in certain clinical scenarios you have low amplitude right that we call it as low voltage ECGs and in certain clinical scenarios you have the QRS complexes with larger amplitude right where there is a very high voltage. So now I will be discussing abnormalities related to your QRS complex related to the duration and related to the voltage. Now let us start with the discussion. So first of all you should understand that QRS complex contain one negative complex that is Q wave, one positive complex that is R wave and another next important negative complex that is the S wave. Now what is that the width of the QRS complex determines? The QRS width it is useful in determining the origin of each QRS complex in the sense. So this helps us to tell whether the origin of the impulse is it like sinus origin or is it the origin of the impulse is from the atria is the origin of the impulse junctional or ventricular. So the QRS width is useful in determining the origin of the impulse. Okay. Now you see the next important question. So the question can be asked in the following manner that is duration of the normal QRS complex is 100 to 120 milliseconds, 120 to 140 milliseconds, 70 to 100 milliseconds, 70 to 110 milliseconds. So if you take the duration of the normal QRS complex it is around 70 to 100 milliseconds right so 70 to 100 milliseconds is the duration of the normal QRS complex okay but in certain clinical scenarios even the duration can be 110 milliseconds as well but that is only sometimes it is observed in healthy subjects but in majority of the individuals the QRS complex duration is 70 to 100 milliseconds that means what for your ventricle to contract for your ventricle to contract completely it takes 70 to 100 milliseconds now within the QRS complex I have said you that you have a negative complex positive complex and then negative complex again that is S wave now why do you have that Right? Let me explain you the concept behind that particular negative, positive and negative complex that is. Now if you take this particular image this tells you why you have negative, positive and negative complexes. First of all you take the Q wave right. So the Q wave it is a negative wave. Why is that? Because the Q wave it is due to septal depolarization right Q wave is due to septal depolarization. Now you should understand that septal depolarization 
it occurs from left to right. So when the septal depolarization is occurring from left to right, what is happening? The electric potential or the wave of depolarization is moving away from the electrode or away from your lead to and that is the reason why your Q wave is a negative complex. So in the ECG basics I have taught you when the wave of depolarization is moving away from the lead you will have a negative wave and when the wave of depolarization is moving towards the lead then you will have a positive wave. All right. Now so that is about why you have a negative complex. Then you take the R wave. So R wave it is a positive wave. So why do you think the R wave is a positive wave? Why because R wave is due to ventricular wall depolarization. Right R wave is due to ventricular wall depolarization. So if you see that here now this is the ventricular wall and you take the direction of depolarization of the ventricular wall. Right you take the direction of depolarization of the ventricular wall. So direction of depolarization of the ventricular wall is towards the the direction of wave of depolarization of the ventricular wall is towards the electrode and thereby you will have a positive wave. Now after the ventricular wall is being depolarized the next subsequent structure that will get depolarized is the base of the ventricle. Right the base of the ventricle. Now if you take the direction of wave of depolarization of the wave of the base of the ventricle the direction of depolarization of the base of the ventricle is exactly opposite to the direction of the electrode. Right it is exactly opposite to the direction of the electrode and thereby you will have a negative S wave. Okay so you will have a negative Q wave then positive R wave and then you have the negative S wave. So this is about your the morphology of the QRS complex why you have negative positive and negative complex. Now let us just go on to the abnormalities whatever we have discussed now is only normal component of your QRS complex. Now let me discuss right so you see this question when do you call wide QRS complex right when do you use the word wide QRS complex duration more than 0.8 seconds more than 0.9 seconds more than 0.12 seconds. We use the word wide QRS complex when the duration of the QRS complex is more than 0.12 seconds or if it is more than 120 milliseconds. Right. So that is when we call the wide QRS complex. Now, now let me discuss what are all the various causes. Right. What are all the various causes of your wide QRS complex. Why there will be increase in the width of the QRS complex. Let me explain you. So the concept behind the abnormality in the width of the QRS complex is that now you see this conducting system of the heart. This is your SA node and this is your AV node and in between that you have the internodal fibers. These are internodal fibers and from the AV node you have the bundle of S which will divide into right bundle branch and as well as the left bundle branch. Now the whenever there is ventricular depolarization right whenever there is ventricular depolarization through the normal conducting system right whenever there is ventricular depolarization through normal conducting system then the duration is 70 to 100 milliseconds. For suppose right for suppose if there is any bundle branch block right for suppose if there is any bundle branch block in such case the width of the QRS complex increases right. So the other condition where you can have the wide QRS complex is when the depolarization is initiated by a focus within the ventricular muscle. Now, now what are the conditions where you will have the depolarization being initiated within the ventricular muscle? That will be in case of the clinical scenarios like ventricular tachycardia or in clinical scenarios like ventricular fibrillation. Now the question is 
if the focus of origin is from the ventricular muscle why do you have that particular wide qrs complex so in this table i have shown you right in this table i have shown you what will be the velocity of the impulses if the origin is from different parts of your heart so for example if the origin of the impulse is from the ventricular muscle the velocity of the impulse is 0.3 to 0.5 meters per second whereas if the ventricle is receiving the impulse through the internodal fibers through the right and as well as left bundle branch and as well as through the purkinje fibers then you see in this scenario it is around 1 meters per second then 2 meters per second and purkinje fibers are the one which will depolarize the ventricular muscle and that will be at a speed of 4 meters per second but if the impulse is originating from the ventricular muscle then in such case the velocity is less that is 0.3 to 0.5 meters per second and that is the reason why right that is the reason why whenever the origin of impulse is from the ventricular muscle the individual will have a wide qrs complex okay so in each case right in each case increased width indicate the depolarization has spread through the ventricles by an abnormal and therefore the slow pathway so whenever the qrs complex is wide that means the ventricle has received the impulse through some abnormality not through your normal conducting system even if you take in case of wpw syndrome what is wpw syndrome it is a pre excitation syndrome so in case of wpw syndrome ventricle will receive the impulse through an accessory pathway right ventricle will receive the impulse through the accessory pathway it is not through the normal conducting system now because the ventricle is receiving the impulse through the accessory pathway ventricle will depolarize at a slower rate compared to that of the depolarization through the normal conducting system and that is the reason why even in case of your wpw syndrome also you will have the wide qrs complex now you see the next question so the question is a qrs duration between 100 and 120 milliseconds suggest all of the following except normal left anterior fascicular block left posterior fascicular block left bundle branch block now the answer in this question is left bundle branch block now why because in case of because in case of the left bundle branch block the qrs duration is more than 120 milliseconds right the qrs duration is more than 120 milliseconds that is in case of the left bundle branch block so what is the question asked duration between 100 to 120 right so we have discussed that in some of the individuals the qrs complex normally also can go up to 110 milliseconds and in left anterior and as well as posterior fascicular block the duration will be 100 to 120 milliseconds but in bundle branch blocks complete right bundle branch block complete left bundle branch block you will have the qrs complex more than 120 milliseconds and what is the mechanism right further i will explain you in detail right now like for example what did i tell you if the origin of impulse is from the ventricle the qrs complex will be wide right i'll just show you a clinical scenario here so you see this clinical scenario treatment of choice toc stands for treatment of choice for these patients presented with giddiness and blood pressure of 80 by 60 mm of mercury what is the treatment of choice options are lignocaine bolus amiodarone bolus dc shock beta blockers now you take the ecg strip right ecg strip how is it you are having right you are having the wide qrs complex and how is the heart rate it is more than 
right it is nearly around 270 per minute okay so it is your wide complex tachycardia so what would be the diagnosis of this ecg strip this is your vt ventricular tachycardia right in arrhythmias section i have discussed still in detail how to identify vt how to identify vf ventricular fibrillation so treatment of choice for this patient presented with giddiness and blood pressure of 80 by 60 millimeters of mercury lignocaine bolus amiodarone bolus dc shock beta blockers so the answer to this particular question is the dc shock always remember if the individual is having vt ventricular tachycardia with hemodynamic stability right with hemodynamic stability then in such case you can give lignocaine bolus right then in such case you can give lignocaine bolus whereas you take the other scenario when the individual is having vt with hemodynamic instability right with hemodynamic instability then in such case we give the dc shock to the patient right in such case we give dc shock to the patient so the answer is the dc shock now let me discuss in detail about the broad complexes broad complex qrs complexes like what are all the conditions where you will have this right there are multiple conditions where you will have the white qrs complexes and i will also explain you the mechanism of all those conditions and i will also show you the ecgs of the respective white qrs complexes but first of all let me show you the causes of white qrs complexes that includes right so these are the causes of the white qrs complex number one in a clinical scenario of intrinsic intraventricular conduction delay like right bundle branch block left bundle branch block other non specific ivcd patterns so whenever there is intrinsic intraventricular conduction delay qrs complex will be more than 120 milliseconds that means the pathology is within the ventricular wall or within the conducting system which is present within the ventricular wall that is why it is called intrinsic whereas if there is like extrinsic in intraventricular conduction delay like for example you take in patients with hyperkalemia or you take like drugs like type 1 antiarrhythmic drugs or class 1 antiarrhythmic drugs right class 1 antiarrhythmic drugs are your sodium channel blockers and the tricyclic antidepressants and as well as phenothiazines so these are the conditions where you will have extrinsic intraventricular conduction delay next ventricular beats just now i have discussed if the origin of the impulse is from the ventricular myocardium then in such case also you will have a wide qrs complex like premature ventricular complex if it is an escape beat or if it is a paced beat you will have the wide qrs complex next in case of ventricular pre excitation syndromes you take in case of wpw syndrome in wpw syndrome the ventricle is not contracting or the ventricular impulse is not through the normal conducting pathway the ventricle is receiving through the accessory pathway ventricle is receiving the impulse through accessory pathway so in ventricular pre excitation complex like wpw syndrome you will have a wide qrs complex and other causes for wide qrs complexes is so the other clinical scenario where you can have wide qrs complexes in case of the factitious ecg so what is factitious ecg like for example the ecg is recorded unintentionally at a faster paper speed normal paper speed should be 25 millimeters per second but if the paper speed is like 50 or 100 millimeters per second in such case you will have wide qrs complex and why QRS complex can be there in case of the ventricular tachyarrhythmias like for example ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation or SVT with aberrancy right supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy right so in these clinical scenarios you will have wide QRS complexes now I have said you all the etiologies of wide QRS complexes now let me discuss some of the ECGs of the etiologies whatever I have said you right so let me show you an ECG here right you see this question 46 year male presents with history of chest pain since 2 hours and ECG is as follows right ventricular MI 
left bundle branch block, right bundle branch block, posterior wall MI. Now, first of all, like as we are discussing the QRS complex, we will directly concentrate on the QRS complex. Okay, right. So, but whenever you are reading ECG, you should not directly jump onto the QRS complex, right? You have to follow a pattern while you are reading the ECG. That is rate, rhythm, axis, then P wave, PR interval, QRS complex, QT interval, ST segment, and then T wave. This is the pattern like what you need to follow whenever you are reading the ECG. But as we are discussing the QRS complex, let me directly jump onto the QRS complex of the ECG. So, if you take the QRS complex in these individuals, so how much is the QRS complex? It is more than 120 milliseconds. Right? Why? Because it is occupying more than three small boxes. Right? It is occupying more than three small boxes. Okay? Now, the point that you should understand here is like there is a characteristic pattern of the ECG in case of right bundle branch block and as well as left bundle branch block. But in any of these bundle branch block, what will be the earliest sign? The earliest sign will be wide QRS complex. Now you take in case of this is a ECG of left bundle branch block. In a case of the left bundle branch block, you will have a pattern and that particular pattern we call it as by a mnemonic that is Williams, right? Let me tell you what is that. So, so this is a mnemonic for identifying the left bundle branch block. Now, what is this Williams? You will have W shaped S wave in V1. Right, you will have W shaped S wave in V1 and you will have M shaped R wave in V6. Right, you see here, this is your V6. Okay. M shaped R wave in V6. So this is the mnemonic like what you need to remember for the left bundle branch block. But either you take LBBB or you take RBBB, the earliest sign will be wide QRS complex. And apart from that, you will have W shaped S wave in V1 and M shaped R wave in V6. Right. So let me just show you a very clear strip. Right. So this is how, see, always remember the ECGs does not come or the ECG will not, the ECG of a patient does not read your mnemonic and come. Okay. The point is you have to just closely correlate. Okay. So W shaped S wave in V1, M shaped R wave in V6. This is seen in cl clinical scenario of, right. This is seen in clinical scenario of the left bundle branch block. So, this patient presented with history of chest pain since two hours, the ECG showing the following pattern is suggestive of LBBB. That means, if the previous ECG of the same individual is normal, but if it is a new onset LBBB, right, if it is a new onset LBBB, then it is suggestive of the myocardial infarction. Right, it is suggestive of the myocardial infarction. Now, let me discuss the concept behind the pattern that is Williams and why you will have wide QRS complex and then what are the causes of left bundle branch block. Let me tell you all those. Okay, you see the concept of LBBB. In LBBB, what is happening? The left bundle branch is blocked. Right, the left bundle branch is blocked. So, if the left bundle branch is blocked, what will happen? Both the ventricles, they don't contract simultaneously. It is the right ventricle which will contract first. And after that, the right ventricular contraction will progress to the left ventricle. That means, by the time both the ventricles contract, it will be more than 120 milliseconds. That is the reason why you will have wide QRS complex. Now, what are the causes of your left bundle branch block? That includes, now the concept is very simple. Now, if there is any pathology within the left ventricular wall, right? If there is any pathology within the left ventricular wall, that can block your left bundle branch.
that can block your left bundle branch. Like for example, you take in patients with the aortic stenosis or you take in patients with the anterior wall MI. In aortic stenosis, what will happen? In aortic stenosis, there will be left ventricular hypertrophy. So as a secondary to left ventricular hypertrophy, there will be compression of your left bundle branch and that makes the individual to land up in left bundle branch block. And you take in patients with anterior wall MI. Anterior wall MI, the left ventricle is infarcted. So when the left ventricle anterior wall is infarcted, within the anterior wall, you have that left bundle branch. So if the anterior wall is infarcted, the left bundle branch is blocked and thereby you will have the ECG suggestive of your left bundle branch block. And the other causes of LBBB include digoxin toxicity, dilated cardiomyopathy, and the other causes include hypertension and as well as the hyperkalemia. So these are all the causes for left bundle branch block. Okay, next. Now after having discussed about the left bundle branch block, now let me move on to the other clinical scenarios where you have the wide QRS complexes. Let me show you the next ECG. Okay, right. So if you see this question here, a 56 year female presented with history of palpitations and occasional syncopal attacks, ECG is as follows. What is the diagnosis? Left bundle branch block, ventricular ectopics, atrial ectopics, ventricular tachycardia. So you see here, what is that you are observing? Like always you have to read the rhythm strip. What is the rhythm strip? Lead 2 is your rhythm strip, right? Why it is considered as rhythm strip? Already I have discussed in my section on the axis. Now, one complex you see, it's a normal complex. The subsequent complex you see, it is an abnormal complex. Okay, so that pattern is regularly followed. So normal complex and abnormal complex, right? Normal complex and abnormal complex. Now the point is, what is that abnormality within that complex? The abnormality in that complex is you have, right? You have a wide QRS complex, right? You have a wide QRS complex. Okay, now. What you should understand here is why you are having that wide QRS complex. That means either there should be a bundle branch block. But just now I have said you in case of left bundle branch block, you will have a pattern called as the Williams. But is the pattern of Williams followed? No. So leave about left bundle branch block. And you take VT, ventricular tachycardia. In ventricular tachycardia, all the complexes will be white. It is not like alternate complexes are white. And you take in atrial ectopics. In atrial ectopics, you will have the abnormality in the P wave, but not the abnormality in the QRS complex. So this is the ECG of the ventricular ectopics. Now I said you, when the focus of impulse is originating from the ventricle, the impulse travels across the ventricular wall slowly. The velocity of the impulse across the ventricular wall is slow. So when the velocity of the impulse across the ventricular wall is slow, then in such case, you will have the wide QRS complex. So to tell the diagnosis of this particular ECG, we call this as ventricular bigemini. Right, we call this as ventricular bigemini. So in ventricular bigemini, alternating complexes will be white. Right, and we can also call that as the ventricular ectopics. Okay, now after having discussed about this, let me tell you the other condition where you can have the wide QRS complex. You see here a patient with pulmonary embolism presented with history of dyspnea, and ECG is as follows. What is the diagnosis? Now, let me show you the other ECG, like where you can have the abnormal QRS complex. You see this ECG and you should be able to tell what is the diagnosis as well. Now as we are discussing QRS complex directly I will move on to the QRS complex directly. Okay. So if you take the QRS complex here, how many boxes it is occupying? It is occupying up to 1, 2, right? I will just zoom it. So you can see here, it is occupying 
less than three small boxes. The QRS complex it is occupying less than three small boxes. Okay. Now the same thing, right? So the same thing you observe in the other leads of the ventricle also, right? It is occupying less than three small boxes. And how is the pattern there of your QRS complex? The pattern of the QRS complex, like you have M-shaped QRS complex and less than three small boxes means how much it will be? That is around less than 120 milliseconds because one small box, it is around 40 milliseconds. So less than three small boxes means less than 120 milliseconds. So where will you have this particular pattern of the ECG? So M-shaped R wave in V1 with QRS complex less than 120 milliseconds that is suggestive of incomplete right bundle branch block. Right, that is suggestive of incomplete right bundle branch block. So the point is, in complete right bundle branch block, how will be the ECG then? In case of complete right bundle branch block, you will have the same M-shaped R wave in V1, but the QRS complex will be more than 120 milliseconds. Right, the QRS complex will be more than 120 milliseconds. But here the QRS complex is less than 120 milliseconds and M-shaped R wave is there that is suggestive of incomplete RBBB, right? Now, let me explain you why do you have that particular M-shaped R wave in V1 and what are the causes of the right bundle branch block, right? All that let me explain you now. So, if you see the concept here, first of all, you should know what are the causes that includes Acute myocardial infarction, mainly right ventricular MI, right ventricular hypertrophy, chronic core pulmonale. In chronic core pulmonale, what will happen? There is increased afterload on the right ventricle. So, when there is increased afterload on the right ventricle, there will be development of your right ventricular hypertrophy. So, whenever there is right ventricular hypertrophy, what will happen? The right bundle branch, which is present within the right ventricle, Right, the right bundle branch which is present within the right ventricle, it gets blocked. Right, and next thing is in pulmonary embolism as well. So, even if you take in case of the pulmonary embolism, there is increased afterload on the right ventricle. So, when there is increased afterload on the right ventricle, there will be right ventricular hypertrophy that will cause the compression of your right bundle branch block, that will cause the compression of right bundle branch, and that makes the individual to land up in right bundle branch block. Okay. So, these are all the causes for the right bundle branch block. Now, let me explain you the concept behind why do you have this particular M pattern R wave in RBBB. See, this is a normal pattern, right? This is your normal pattern. But you see, in case of right bundle branch block, what will be the pattern? In case of right bundle branch block, remember what will happen. So, your right bundle branch is blocked. So, thereby what will happen? Initially, the left ventricle will contract. So, whenever the left ventricle contract, right, you will have a small R wave because the wave of depolarization will move to, towards the lead. So, you will have a small R wave. Now, after the left ventricle getting contracted, next thing what will happen? Subsequently, subsequently, the impulse will try to move from the left side to the right side. When the impulse is moving from left side to right side, you have this negative complex because the impulse is moving away from lead V1, right? Away from your electrode. And subsequently again, when the ventricle, right ventricle contracts after receiving the depolarization wave from the left ventricle, the ventricular wall depolarization is again towards the electrode and thereby again you will have a positive wave. So this is the concept behind why you have that particular M pattern R wave in V1. So initially left ventricle contracts and after that the wave of depolarization will move away from the electrode and after that when the right ventricle contracts the wave of depolarization is towards your V1 right and thereby you will have that particular M pattern R wave 
in V1. So the mnemonic what you have to remember for right bundle branch block is marrow. Right? So what is this marrow? This particular marrow it stands for R wave in V1 will be of shape M shape whereas S wave in V6 will be of the W shape. Whereas for left bundle branch block it was completely reverse that is Williams. But for right bundle branch block please remember the mnemonic that is marrow. Okay. Now after having discussed about the ECGs of RBBB and LBBB. Now let me just show you one more clinical scenario. Right. So if you see this clinical scenario we have a 70 year old male known case of diabetes mellitus and CKD stage 5 presented with history of dyspnea. Right. Presented with history of dyspnea. ECG is as follows. Now what is the diagnosis? Right, ECG is as follows. What is the diagnosis? Hypokalemia, hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, and hypercalcemia. Right, as we are discussing QRS complexes, we will directly jump onto the QRS complexes and let us also see if there is any abnormality in the other waves as well. So, the history is important in this patient. The individual is in CKD stage 5. So, when the individual is in CKD stage 5, what is the very important electrolyte abnormality what you will have in CKD patients? That is hyperkalemia. And how will you be able to make out the hyperkalemia on the ECG? In the ECG, in hyperkalemia, you will have the presence of tall T waves. Right? You will have the presence of tall T waves. You see here, the presence of tall T waves. And that too, tall tented T waves, right, that too, tall tented T waves. Now, apart from this particular tall tented T waves, what is the other abnormality you are seeing in the QRS complex? If you see the QRS complex, it is a wide QRS complex. So, what I want to tell you is, in hyperkalemia, you will have a wide QRS complex, right, wide QRS complex. So, whenever there is hyperkalemia, ventricle it will take longer time for depolarization and thereby you will have a wide QRS complex. So electrolyte abnormality where you will have wide QRS complex immediately the answer should be hyperkalemia. Right. Now after having discussed about this. Right. So if you see the next question drug causing wide QRS complex imipramine adrenaline isoproterenol morphine. So I have said you what are the drugs which will cause the wide QRS complexes. The drugs which will cause white QRS complexes is class 1 antiarrhythmic drugs which are sodium channel blockers and the next one is the tricyclic antidepressants. So the tricyclic antidepressants here it includes imipramine. So imipramine is the drug which will cause the white QRS complex right and you see the next subsequent question. So the question is a QRS duration between 100 and 120 milliseconds suggests all of the following except. Right? I have discussed the same question previously also but I wanted to tell you what are all the conditions where you will have the QRS duration between 100 and 120 and what are all the conditions where you will have more than 120 in this clinical scenario. So the answer here is the left bundle branch block. In left bundle branch block the QRS duration is more than 120 milliseconds but you see here. Now what are all the conditions where you will have the QRS complex in between 100 to 120 in case of incomplete right bundle branch block I have shown you that ECG and as well as the fascicular blocks left anterior fascicular block and left posterior fascicular block you will have the QRS in between 100 to 120 milliseconds and it can be even in normal individual as well because in normal individual also in some persons it can go up to 110 milliseconds as well and where will you have the wide QRS complex? You will have the wide QRS complex in a clinical scenarios like right bundle branch block, left bundle branch block and as well as intraventricular conduction delay like in hyperkalemia or antiarrhythmic drugs. Okay. Now after having discussed about the conditions where you will have the wide QRS complexes,
I will show you one more multiple choice question that is a wide QRS complex more than or equal to 0.12 seconds may be seen in all of the following except hyperkalemia, WPW syndrome, ventricular tachycardia, left anterior fascicular block. So hyperkalemia just now I have shown you the ECG you will have the QRS complex more than 120. WPW syndrome it's a pre-excitation complex or the pre-excitation syndrome where the ventricle will receive the impulse through an accessory pathway the QRS complex will be more than 120. In ventricular tachycardia the focus of impulse the origin of impulse is from the ventricular myocardium and the QRS complex is more than 120. But whereas if you see in case of left anterior fascicular block in left anterior fascicular block the QRS duration it is in between 100 to 120 milliseconds right the QRS duration it is in between 100 to 120 milliseconds now the other clinical scenario where I have said you the wide QRS complex you will have is in case of the factitious ECG now how it will be I'll just show you the ECG also now what did I tell you about the factitious ECG I have said you that when the speed of the ECG paper is increased there you will have the wide QRS complex see the normal speed is 25 millimeters per second and you are having the QRS complex up to 100 milliseconds but whenever the speed is increased you see this the QRS complex will be widened why because when the ECG paper is going out very fastly it is not that it will pick up the electrical activity fastly no whenever the ECG paper is going very fastly outside the point you should remember is in an individual who is normal ventricle is contracting at a normal speed but the paper is going out very fastly so in such case the paper will receive the impulse for longer duration right the paper will receive the impulse for longer duration okay right so in and again in the section of my ECG basics I have taught you very clearly what will happen if the paper speed is increased what will happen if the paper speed is decreased so even paper speed is increased it will appear that the individual is having bradycardia and you will have the wide QRS complex so the speed like 50 millimeters per second you will have the wide QRS complex okay now so this finishes the clinical scenarios where you will have wide QRS complexes and as well as the respective ECGs. Now let me discuss the clinical scenarios where you will have narrow QRS complexes. Now the presence of narrow QRS complex it can arise I mean it tells you that the origin of impulse is above the ventricle in case of narrow QRS complexes. And if it is a narrow QRS complex it will also tell me where exactly is the site of origin of the impulse but it is always supraventricular within the supraventricular also the impulse can originate from three main places what are those I will tell you so what I want to tell you at this point is in a patient with ECG of narrow QRS complex the origin of impulse is above the ventricle and above the ventricle also the origin of impulse can be at from three main places depending upon where exactly is the origin of the impulse above the ventricle the shape of the P wave is determined and accordingly you will be able to tell where exactly is the origin of the impulse as well like for example there is narrow QRS complex narrow QRS complex means 70 to 100 milliseconds that is what I mean to say narrow QRS complex okay that means normal QRS complex and if there is narrow QRS complex and you have a normal P wave in this case the origin of impulse is from the SA node right in this case the origin of the impulse is SA node whereas you take another scenario you have narrow QRS complex but you have abnormal P wave right you see this the P wave whatever you are having you have some abnormality so what is this pattern called 
This pattern is called saw-toothed appearance of P wave. Saw-toothed P wave. Where do you have this particular saw-toothed P wave? You will have in case of the atrial flutter. Right? You will have that in case of the atrial flutter. Alright? Now, you can also have a narrow QRS complex with no P wave at all. Where do you have that? You will have narrow QRS complex with no P wave in scenario of junctional rhythm. Right? This is the ECG of your atrial flutter again. Right? This is not your junctional rhythm. Right? This is not your junctional rhythm. This is the ECG of the atrial flutter. Okay? So, whereas in junctional rhythm, you will not have the P wave but you will have the narrow QRS complex. So, depending upon the morphology of the P wave, you can decide where exactly is the origin of the impulse. Normal P wave, normal QRS complex, sinus origin. Abnormal P wave, narrow QRS complex, either it is a flutter wave or fibrillatory wave. Narrow QRS complex, no P wave, then it is a junctional rhythm. Right, then it is a junctional rhythm. So, this is about your abnormalities of the QRS complex related to your amplitude. The next thing like what you need to know in the abnormalities of the QRS complex is the voltage. Right, it is about the voltage. Now let me just show you a question related to your voltage. So, after discussing about the abnormality of the QRS complex relating to the duration. So, we have discussed narrow complex and we have discussed broad complex QRS complexes abnormalities. Now let me discuss the abnormalities of the QRS complexes related to the voltage. So we have low voltage QRS complexes and we have increased amplitude or increased voltage QRS complexes. So what are the respective conditions let me discuss now. So if you see this multiple choice question low QRS voltage on ECG indicates pulmonary embolism pericardial effusion, carpal nail, infective endocarditis. So, the answer in this question is pericardial effusion. Now, let me explain you the concept behind why you will have low voltage complexes in case of the pericardial effusion or in certain clinical scenarios, why do you have that particular low voltage complexes? Now, you see the concept. Okay. So, before that, what is the criteria to call it as the low voltage complexes? The criteria to call it as low voltage complexes is the amplitude of the QRS complex it should be less than 5 mm in the limb leads and augmented leads and it should be less than 10 mm in the precordial leads. That is what is the criteria for the low voltage complexes. Now, in case of pericardial effusion, why you have that particular low voltage complexes? Let me explain you. So, you see this image of the pericardial effusion. This is the normal pericardium. So, when there is normal pericardium, the leads which are placed over the precordium will pick up the electrical activity from the heart and then you will have normal voltage QRS complexes. But when there is presence of the pericardial effusion, for suppose you have placed the electrode or the lead over the surface of the chest. Right? You have placed the electrode over the surface of the chest. So, what will happen? The electrodes, they are having the obstruction of, right? They are having the obstruction of picking up the electrical activity because of the presence of the pericardial fluid. So, this particular pericardial fluid will not conduct the electrical activity of the heart adequately or actually the electrical activity whatever is being produced in the heart cannot be transmitted to the surface of the chest because of the presence of this particular pericardial fluid. And that is the reason why the electrical activity picked up by the electrodes will be less compared to normal and that is the reason why you will have low voltage complexes. And let me tell you, there are many clinical conditions where you will have low voltage complexes, right? Let me explain you, okay? So, 
one of the clinical scenario is anasarca what is anasarca it is a clinical condition where you have the generalized edema right so whenever there is generalized edema right there will be edema over the, around the chest wall also and whenever there is edema around the chest wall the electrical activity picked up by the electrodes will be reduced and thereby you will have low voltage complexes next cardiac infiltration or replacement that is amyloidosis or the tumors see what is amyloidosis it is abnormal accumulation of abnormal proteins and these abnormal proteins they get accumulated within the myocardium and thereby the electrical activity which is generated within the myocardium will be reduced and thereby you get a low voltage complexes and the same concept apply even for the tumors as well next now the other clinical conditions include the cardiac transplantation cardiomyopathies copd in case of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease like why do you have these low voltage complexes copd one of the subtype is emphysema what is emphysema it is nothing but irreversible abnormal bulging or dilatation of your lungs or lung parenchyma so whenever the lungs they are abnormally dilated they will overlap the heart so once they overlap the heart the electrical activity which is generated within the heart cannot be transmitted to the surface of the chest adequately and thereby you will have low voltage complexes in patients with the copd next you take constrictive pericarditis in constrictive pericarditis like what happens is there will be fibrosis of the pericardium or calcification of the pericardium so whenever there is fibrosis or calcification of the pericardium what happens the electrical activity which is generated within the myocardium will not be transmitted onto the surface of the chest and thereby you will have low voltage complexes and the next clinical scenario is like hypothyroidism see hypothyroidism is one of the endocrine disorder where the individual can develop pericardial effusion so once there is development of pericardial effusion concept i have already explained prior to this you will have low voltage complexes next in case of left sided pneumothorax see what happens in left sided pneumothorax is there will be collapse of the left side of the lung and this pneumothorax will push the mediastinum to the right side right this left sided pneumothorax will push the mediastinum to the right side so once the left sided pneumothorax push the mediastinum to the right side what will happen the electrical activity whichever is generated within the heart will not be transmitted onto the surface of the chest adequately and thereby you will have low voltage complexes so in patients with left pneumothorax you will have low voltage complexes next in case of extensive myocardial infarction right the word itself tells you whenever the myocardium is completely being dead what happens the electrical activity which is transmitted to the surface of the chest will be reduced next in case of myocarditis in obesity in obesity what will happen there is lots and lots of the adipose tissue surrounding the chest wall when there is lots and lots of adipose tissue surrounding the chest wall the electrical activity whichever is generated within the myocardium will not be transmitted to the surface of the chest properly or adequately and thereby you will have low voltage complexes next pericardial effusion already we have discussed pericardial tamponade and as well as the pleural effusion and that to which sided pleural effusion left sided pleural effusion right whenever there is left sided massive left sided pleural effusion that pleural effusion will be overlapping the precordium or will be overlapping the heart and the electrical activity cannot be transmitted onto the surface of the chest so these are all the causes of the low voltage complexes all right next yes you see the next important question low qrs voltage on ecg with left ventricular hypertrophy on echocardiography suggest a diagnosis of pericardial effusion cardiac amyloidosis cor pulmonary infective endocarditis so low voltage on the ecg but left ventricular hypertrophy on echocardiography is seen in patients with a cardiac amyloidosis see in cardiac amyloidosis like what exactly happens there there will be abnormal accumulation of the abnormal proteins right it's a type of infiltrative cardiomyopathy right so subsequent to the infiltration of the abnormal proteins into the myocardium that will lead to left ventricular hypertrophy okay so amyloidosis is a clinical condition where the individual will develop restrictive cardiomyopathy or it is also called infiltrative cardiomyopathy
okay so this is about the condition where you have left ventricular hypertrophy but low voltage on the ecg but that left ventricular hypertrophy can be detected on the two dimensional echocardiography all right next you see one more question so the question is endocrine condition causing low voltage complexes pheochromocytoma diabetes insipidus hypothyroidism carcinoid tumor so just now i have discussed with you that hypothyroidism is one where the individual can develop the pericardial effusion right where the individual will develop pericardial effusion so secondary to the pericardial effusion there will be low voltage complexes all right next lung pathology with low voltage complexes bronchiectasis copd bronchial asthma bronchogenic carcinoma the answer to this question is copd that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in case of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease you have a subtype of this that is emphysema so in case of emphysema abnormally dilated lungs will be overlapping the heart and the electrical activity will not be transmitted onto the surface of the chest adequately and thereby the individual will have low voltage complexes so this is the concept of the low voltage complexes and what are all the conditions where you will have low voltage complexes all right now following that you see we will take up the next abnormality where you have increased amplitude of the qrs complexes that includes the following so the question is in left ventricular hypertrophy lvh is left ventricular hypertrophy sv1 plus rv6 is more than 25 mm 30 mm 35 mm 40 mm so you should understand the concept and why you will have this i will explain you in a very conceptual manner in lvh sv1 plus rv6 it is more than 35 mm that is the answer why it will be i will explain you okay and there is a name for this criteria also this is called sokolov leon criteria right this is called as the sokolov leon criteria now in what is this sv1 plus rv6 let me tell you let me show you the image also so the name of the criteria i have said you is the sokolov leon criteria okay now so these are the abnormalities of the right these are the abnormalities of the qrs complexes where you have the high voltage so increased qrs voltage is often taken in to interfere the presence of the left ventricular hypertrophy right and there are like multiple voltage criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy and one among that is your sokolov leon criteria right one among that is your sokolov leon criteria so if you take this sokolov leon criteria how do what is this i said you sv1 plus rv6 should be more than 35 what is that either it might be v1 or v2 anything see this is the s wave in v2 and this is the r wave in v5 okay now one large box right we are very much aware that it is 5 mm and how many large boxes is your s wave occupying 1 2 3 and almost like 3.4 so how much is this particular s wave depth now s wave depth is around 18 mm right s wave depth is around 18 mm and you take the amplitude of the r wave How, what is the amplitude of the r wave you see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so it is occupying seven large boxes so that becomes 35 mm so if you sum up this 35 plus 18 so how much it becomes around it comes around 53 mm so how much we want we want just 35 mm if it is more than 35 mm that is suggestive of left ventricular hypertrophy and what is the name of this criteria the name of this criteria is the sokolov leon criteria now i'll show you a proper ecg with a left ventricular hypertrophy you see this so if you see this ecg it is satisfying the criteria of the left ventricular hypertrophy 
Now in left ventricular hypertrophy, we also have what is called the strain pattern in the left sided leads. See what is the strain pattern? This is your strain pattern. So what is the description of this particular strain pattern is the ST segment it is pulled down and T wave is inverted right ST segment it is pulled down and T wave is inverted that is what is called as the strain pattern right that is what is called as the strain pattern. Now why do you get this particular SV1 plus RV6 is more than 35 I will also explain you the concept behind that the concept is that right you see this the individual is having left ventricular hypertrophy. So when there is left ventricular hypertrophy what will happen? There will be increased wave of depolarization towards your V5 and as well as V6. Right? There will be increased amplitude of the depolarization towards the left sided leads. Why? Because the left sided leads they are thickened. Right, left sided leads they are thickened in the sense the myocardium towards the left sided leads it is thickened. So that is the reason why in V5 and V6 you will have a large amplitude QRS complexes right and the electrical activity it is moving the what electrical activity it is increased electrical activity moving away from your V1. So V1 we place here then V2, then V3, then V4, <clears throat> okay. So a large amplitude electrical activity is moving away from your V1. So when electrical activity is moving away from the electrode, you will have the negative complex, right? You will have the negative complex, okay. So in patients with the left ventricular hypertrophy, V5, V6, the amplitude of the QRS complex will be very large, whereas in V1 and V2, the S wave will be deep. That is the concept behind your SV1 plus RV6 more than 35 mm. And let me tell you for the diagnosing left ventricular hypertrophy, it is not that we have only Sokolov Leon criteria, right? There are many other criteria, right? Let me show you. Yeah, you see this uh, MCQ. Following criteria is not used in the diagnosis of left ventricular hypertrophy. Sokolov Leon criteria or Sokolov Leon voltage, Romhilt Estes point score system, third Cornell voltage criteria, then Butler Leggett score. So the one what we don't use for diagnosing left ventricular hypertrophy is your Butler Leggett score. Then all, the remaining all we use, right? The mnemonic is SCR, right? South Central Railway. S stands for Sokolov Leon criteria. R stands for Romate Estes Point Score System. C stands for, right, C stands for Cornell Voltage Criteria, right. We also have Cornell Regression Equation and Cornell Voltage Duration Measurement is also there. So these are the criteria for diagnosing left ventricular hypertrophy, right. Now, after having discussed about the criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy, now let me tell you how will be the ECG changes in right ventricular hypertrophy. In right ventricular hypertrophy you will have exactly opposite. What is that you had in your left ventricular hypertrophy? The QRS complexes had positive large voltage in V5, V6 and it was more negative in V1. Exactly opposite to this you will have in case of the right ventricular hypertrophy. Right? Let me show you that. Okay. So now you see this ECG of right ventricular hypertrophy. So here we place V1, then V2, then V3, then V4, V5, then V6. Okay. So what is that you are having here? Right ventricular hypertrophy. Right. You are having the right ventricular hypertrophy. So when there is right ventricular hypertrophy, what will happen? There will be increased electrical activity towards the right sided leads right towards the right sided leads there is increased amplitude of the electrical activity so what are your right sided leads v1 and as well as v2 these are your right sided leads 
right these are your right sided leads so in v1 and v2 you have increased amplitude of the qrs complexes normally you take this is your r wave right so r wave in v1 and as well as v2 right in a normal individual you will have a very small r wave or r wave is absent in v1 in a normal individual but here what is happening in right ventricular hypertrophy the electrical activity majority of the electrical activity or the axis of your wave of depolarization is towards the right side of the heart and that is the reason why the r wave whatever is there will be of greater amplitude in v1 and as well as v2 and the electrical activity is moving away from your v5 and as well as v6 so thereby the r wave in v5 v6 it will be small and electrical activity is moving away from v5 v6 so that is the reason why s wave it will be deep you take in a normal individual you will not have s wave this deep in v6 in v6 the s wave will be a very negligible s wave hardly like 1 to 2 mm but in patients with right ventricular hypertrophy you will have deep s wave right you will have the presence of deep s wave so that is what is the concept in case of the right ventricular hypertrophy right let me show you the ecg of left vent right ventricular hypertrophy so this is the ecg of the right ventricular hypertrophy right this is the ecg of right ventricular hypertrophy you see here you have dominant r wave in v1 and as well as v2 and you have deep s wave in v5 and as well as v6 and along with that you also have the strain pattern right along with that you also have strain pattern so what is that strain pattern that is st depression and t wave inversion in v1 and as well as v2 right you see here this is the st depression and t wave inversion in v1 and v2 that is what is called as strain pattern in the right sided lead that is what is called as strain pattern in the right sided leads so these are the abnormalities related to your increased amplitude of the qrs complexes now let me show you one more question so you see the next important abnormality within the qrs complex you see the question 45 year male presented with sudden onset dyspnea ecg shows ecg is shown what is the diagnosis the options are acute left ventricular failure cardiac tamponade then we have acute exacerbation of copd then the anterior wall mi so if you take this particular ecg what is that you are able to make out here you are having qrs complexes alternating in the height right so you can make out this is a large amplitude and this is a small amplitude this is a large amplitude this is a smaller amplitude so large and as well as the small amplitude okay so this is when the qrs complex alternate in height we call it as electrical alternance right we call it as electrical alternance okay so the most important cause is the cardiac tamponade so in cardiac tamponade or massive pericardial effusion what will happen the heart it swings back and forth with a large fluid filled pericardium right within a large fluid filled pericardium the heart will swing back and as well as forth right and that will give rise to what is called as the electrical alternance so in electrical alternance one complex is a large complex in the alternating complex is a small complex so so and these patients with the cardiac tamponade what will be the clinical manifestation they will have acute onset dyspnea and what is the ecg shows what is the diagnosis it is your cardiac tamponade right now so in case of the electrical alternance the heart will swing back and forth within the large fluid filled pericardium so these are the abnormalities of the qrs complex so we have discussed 
abnormality of the QRS complex that is wide QRS complex, narrow QRS complex. Narrow QRS complex mainly tells you where exactly is the origin of the focus, right? Either it might be sinus origin, right? Or it would be ectopic, right? Or it would be atrial ectopic or it would be the junctional rhythm where there is no P wave at all. So wide QRS complex, narrow QRS complex. And the other abnormality what we have discussed is low voltage complex and as well as high voltage complexes. So this finishes the abnormalities of the QRS complexes. Thank you very much.